Hi, everybody. Gene here. Welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, where every single week we answer the most common and uncommon questions about tapping and EFT so you can get the most out of your tapping practice, eliminate self-sabotage, and take the action that you want. As a reminder, for those of you that are only listening to the podcast because you get email notifications from me on Thursday from the newsletter, over the course of the last couple of months, I have, in addition to the regular podcast on Wednesday, I have been republishing some old podcasts on Monday, and I've been taking the content out of these old bonus episodes, slicing off the beginning and the end, re-recording intros and outros, and turning them into full-grown podcasts. And why that has happened is a long story that we won't get into here, but what it's done is given us the opportunity to revisit some content, some of which, which is 9, 10, 11 years old, that is still pertinent today. And I say this because I want to highlight the one that went live on Monday, and that is episode 407. So if you go to tappingqa.com slash 407, you can get the episode. Or if you go to tappingpodcast.com, the link for 407 is right there. And the reason why I wanted to highlight this particular episode is I talk about the reason why we tap. And you might have lots of reasons why you tap because it's I'm angry or I am tired or I have physical pain. But it's more than just the specific reasons why we tap, but dispositionally big picture. There are two reasons in my mind why we tap. And if we have a clear idea of what we are trying to do inside of one of those two reasons, it's going to impact the way that we tap and we're going to get more out of our tapping if we do that. So if you have not done so already, I would encourage you to go to tappingpodcast.com, click on the link for podcast 407, or if you already subscribed to the podcast, just go back one in your podcatcher and listen to 407 because I think it's really important information so you can get more out of your tapping practice. This is Gene Montrostelli, and welcome to the Tapping Q&A podcast, recorded live to tape from Williamsburg in Brooklyn. This is episode 408, originally aired November 27th, 2019. Hi, everyone. I hope this finds you well wherever you are and whatever time a day you're going to chance to listen to this. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Today, we're going to talk about and do a little tapping for the tools that we picked up in the past that helped us to survive, which are no longer useful. And oftentimes when we have those tools, if they are no longer useful, they might actually be a hindrance today. But before we do that, just two quick announcements. The first is I would like to thank all of the supporters of the Tapping Q&A podcast. There are a number of people out there who are financially supporting the podcast. So you get the opportunity to get this absolutely free. It takes time. It takes effort. It takes money to produce the show. And I really appreciate the generosity of all of our supporters. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. As a reminder to all of the supporters, over the course of November, I've been doing a 30 day tapping challenge over on YouTube for the supporters. I have also included every single day in the month of November MP3s. So you can actually download all of those tap alongs that we did in video form. So you can have them on your smartphone to take them with you. If you become a supporter of the podcast, not only will you have access to all of those bonus MP3s, as well as all of them from the past, there's a number of other great bonuses, including custom tapping scripts, maybe even some time with me. If you are interested in supporting the podcast, all you need to do is go to tappingqa.com slash support, where you can find all of the information. And again, thank you to all of those who are supporting the show. The other thing is I don't want to remind you is that we have a free 10 part guide where you can use tapping to eliminate self-sabotage. There are audios, there are videos, there's instructions, there's tapping scripts, all of it absolutely free. All you need to do is go to tappingqa.com, click on the big blue button. If you happen to be listening to this right now in the website, up in that right-hand column, you will also see a big blue button for the 10-part guide. It's absolutely free, useful stuff. Every single day in your inbox, you'll get a part making it easier for you to con digest the information, and put it into place so you can eliminate self-sabotage. Today I wanted to talk about, and when we're at the end of this, do a little tapping on, around the tools that we have picked up that are no longer useful for us, but were useful in the past. And the reason this came about is over the course of the last number of weeks, I've been having conversations with clients where we have unearthed tools and patterns and approaches to their daily life, which my clients created at a very young age when they were going through something really difficult in their childhood, through their family, through some experience that they were in. And they were beating themselves up 
because the way that they were acting today was a really unuseful way of acting. But those tools were picked up for a really good reason. For example, um, I work with a lot of clients who grew up in a circumstance where they were very, very outside the norm of the people in their family. They had different ideas. They had different worldviews. In many cases, they had really different gifts that they had. And because of the family that they were in or the community they were in or the time in which they were growing up, it was not safe for them to fully articulate who they were. And so they developed these tactics, which we're going to call tools in this circumstance, to survive their day, where they would either put up with something that was really, really hard and just kind of grit their teeth and push their way through it, or they would suppress who they were and hide their true identity so that they were safe. And now today, they're in a circumstance where they are like the person who is in pain is just pushing through the pain without standing up for themselves or the people who recognize that they have different ways of being in the world or they're still hiding it. And when we look at ourselves in the present moment as fully formed functioning adults, we recognize the fact that I shouldn't be putting up with pain and just gritting my teeth and bearing it, or I shouldn't be hiding who I truly am. And because through adult eyes and experience, we judge ourselves really harshly for making these very childish choices. But if for years and years and years and decades and decades, in some cases, we acted one way to keep ourselves safe, it has become a habit and it makes sense that we're still doing that. So the first thing that's important for us to recognize is that it's okay for us to be easy with ourselves for making these bad choices. And I'm going to put the word bad here in quotes because they're not choices about who we truly are today. And they're not choices that are truly helpful today. And so we see them as bad choices because they're leading us in a direction that we don't want to go. But oftentimes those tools that we picked up when we were really young were the reason why we survived. Because we picked up these tools of strength, of pushing through, of keeping ourselves safe by using coded language about how we see the world, those are really useful tools. And on some level, it's important that we celebrate that our younger selves were able to come up with ways of surviving something that was really difficult. It wasn't that we were being a coward by hiding our true selves. It wasn't that we were being a doormat because we were letting people walk all over us. But when we're young, we have so much less power. We have so much less agency and we have so much less experience. And because this is the case, we are going to reach for the tools and we are going to reach for the tool set that is the safest in that particular moment. And so it wasn't that we failed, it's we survived, which means we succeeded. Because if we didn't survive, we wouldn't be in this moment tapping or thinking about or processing or trying to transform this. And so these tools that were created were created in unconscious and subconscious ways. It wasn't as if when I, we were six years old, we're laying in bed at night going, how do I get through the day? How do I navigate my family? How do I do this sort of stuff? We just figured it out on the fly. And so because that's the case, I refer to these as implicit tools that there was a tool that was created in some implied way without any sort of deliberate intention. Now that we are adults, we get to choose explicit tools. We get to name specifically the tools that we are using to overcome a problem that is in front of us. And so it is something that is happening with intent and by design. And because that is the case, like tapping, that is an explicit tool. I recognize that I am not acting the way that I want to act. I'm focusing on something really specific and therefore I'm moving forward with this explicit tool. And I give myself permission to recognize that these are the choices I want to make. 
And so as we are creating these explicit tools, we are now in a circumstance where we get to let go of and release the implicit tools that no longer serve us when we were young because we have more standing, we have more power, we have more experience, we have more agency in the world than we did when we were young. And so I find it really useful to do a number of things. One, name the tools that we want to use today. Two, name the implicit tools that we had in the past. Three, appreciate the fact that we were able to create these explicit tools to keep us safe and healthy. And four, to be able to let go of those implicit tools from our much younger years without feeling like we made a mistake in creating them. We're not judging our past self when we do that, but instead we're just recognizing it's no longer useful. And so all of that is a little bit theoretical. So instead of being caught in this sense of those four points and in this theory, let's do a little tapping to demonstrate how we can transform these tools in a way that is useful and healthy for us. So to begin with, what I want you to do is just tap on the side of the hand, take a nice big deep breath. Continue tapping on the side of your hand, take another nice deep breath. And just repeat after me as we move from tapping point to tapping point in the order that makes the most sense for you. I appreciate that I get to make conscious choices today. I get to make choices about who I am. About how I act. I even get to choose the tools that are helping me to stay safe and healthy. When I was very young, I wasn't consciously creating tools. I was simply trying to survive. And I did survive. I was creative. I was thoughtful. I came up with ways to get through very difficult times. If I knew back then what I know now, I might have created different tools. I might have created different tactics. But I was young and inexperienced. I did the best that I could. And what I did was pretty amazing. Without guidance, I found ways of surviving. Without guidance, I made it through and I am here today. Now that I am older, now that I am more experienced, now that I have more agency, I can make very different choices. I can consciously create new tools. As I consciously create these new tools, I am letting go of the tools and tactics from my youth. And when I do this, I am not saying those tools are wrong.
I'm not saying I made a mistake by acting that way in the past. Instead, what I am doing is I am honoring the choices I made in the past and recognizing I have new choices to make today. I so appreciate the younger me. who was creative enough to help me to survive difficult times. Choosing new ways to respond is not disrespecting the younger me. It is taking care of the younger me. In new, powerful ways. I give myself permission to honor the past and to celebrate the new choices I'm making in the future. The more thoughtful choices I am making today are only capable of happening because of the choices I made back then. I'm healthier today because of the choices my younger me made. I appreciate and love the younger me because it has created the ability for me to make better choices today. Nice big deep breath. And so you can see in that tapping how we're straddling that line between honoring and recognizing the past choices and recognizing how we can be a new new creation and act in a new way today. Because if we're able to honor and venerate those old choices as the best choices we could make, It makes it easier to let go of those implicit tools and pick up more explicit tools, which are going to allow us to move forward in a healthier way. So give that a tap through. And if there are things that came up as you're tapping with that, write them down, go back to them. I wouldn't be surprised if some really specific memories came up as we think of our younger selves and the choices our younger self was making. And that gives us just really great fodder for us to use the other tools in our toolbox, like the movie technique and other techniques like that to help clear out those past moments. Because this gives us the opportunity, one, to let go of those old tools, but two, also, if there's any pieces of emotion that need to be cleared, they've just been revealed to us and allows us to transform that as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. If you're listening to this in the website, just go down to that comment section and leave me your thoughts on how you would reflect on something like this. Or you can reach out to me directly. I love hearing from you, Gene, G-E-N-E, at tappingqa.com. If you're on the website, you can click on the contact link. If there's someone in your life who you think would appreciate this sort of thought, this sort of reflection, please be our ambassador and pass it along. The easiest way for people to find new contact is from a recommendation from a friend. And it truly is the highest compliment you can pay me and my work is if you pass it on to someone else saying, hey, I think this would be useful. It would mean the world to me if you did that. If you haven't done so already, please subscribe to the podcast and in podcasting parlance, subscribing is free. You can find the show in Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeartRadio, DeezerRadio.com, Luminary, wherever you find audio, you can find the Tapping Q&A podcast. If you go to TappingPodcast.com. It will give you instructions on how you can find the podcast in all of those places. You can even find the show on your A-L-E-X-A with just a couple of commands. It will start playing right there in your home, in your living room. If you have a topic or something you'd like us to cover in the future, please let me know. Many of the best topics have come up from recommendations from readers and listeners just like you. Again, Gene, G-E-N-E at tappingqa.com. 
For the Tapping Q&A podcast, this is Gene Montrestelli. I hope you have a great day and I will talk to you real soon. Bye-bye. The Tapping Q&A podcast is copyright Gene Montrestelli, Tapping Q&A 2016. All views expressed by guests are those of the guests and not necessarily of Gene Montrestelli or Tapping Q&A.